And welcome to this edition of the Native News Update on this Monday, October 8th. I am the host for today's program, Paul Demain. And today we go talk with Mark Trehunt from the Shoshone Bannock Reservation at Fort Hall, uh, Fort Hall, Idaho. And we discuss the latest in presidential politics and the horse race. Uh, good morning, Mark Trey Hunt. Thanks for joining with us on the Native News Update uh, today. Uh, as usual, we want to ask you about where all the politics of politics are, and uh, we have some kind of a horse race uh, going on here now since last Tuesday's, uh, uh, Wednesday's debate. Um, the polls still have Obama ahead by a point to point and a half when you look at the long-term trends, but there's a couple polls today that are showing that it's a neck and neck race. What can you tell us about what happened in the last uh, five or six days? Well, um, I kind of before the past five or six days, I, I think it's really important to remember that this country is really evenly divided. And that's something that was true six months ago, three months ago, uh, and then over the last five days. About a week ago, it appeared that President Obama was starting to run up a lead, particularly in Ohio, uh, Virginia, Florida, some of the key battleground states, and that the race might not be close. And his debate performance, which um, a lot of people feel like it just wasn't there, uh, brought Romney back. But I think what it really did is it got the Romney base energized, and they're excited and they're out. And I think this election, more than most, is going to be a base election. One of the ways we know that is there's very few undecided. Almost everybody's made up their mind about who they want, and it really comes down to who's going to vote. We saw a tightening of the race uh, already um, before the debate. Uh, people are making their mind up. The question is, is as of today, when we look at uh, the Electoral College ratings, uh, we still have uh, Obama at uh, something like uh, 200, or excuse me, 251 compared to Romney's 181. Do these polls, I mean, so he used to have 68% uh, in Idaho and now he has 78%. Uh, uh, does, it doesn't help him, does he? It, he? it has to be these key states that we're talking about. Right. It really has to be the key states. And um, I think the state of Wisconsin, where you're at, is a good example. Uh, early on, it was um, the polls showed that uh, Paul Ryan might have given him a bump to make it competitive. Then Obama started to stretch it out. Historically, Wisconsin uh, votes for the Democrat for president. So if he gets that traditional margin and carries Wisconsin, it makes it very difficult for the Republicans. Ohio is one to watch. If um, Obama, no Republican has won without Ohio. Obama's had a big lead there. Uh, Romney's been hurt by his opposition to the bailout of the car industry. Uh, Virginia is another key state. Um, Virginia, um, I mean, you have a lot of the federal government workers in the North who know that austerity measures are going to mean a lot of layoffs. They call them rifts in the federal government mm -hmm. um, that could um, impact their lives. In the South, however, you have uh, the military that feels like Obama's not been nearly as supportive. So you have these two key uh, interest groups kind of pushing off against each other. Indeed, it's interesting. It's going to be a tight race. Like you've indicated, this this country is very split. Again, just peeking at the Obama running average, he's got about a three-point lead in Ohio. But the last couple polls coming in, for example, we ask America got uh, Romney up by one point. Uh, Rasmussen reports got, has Obama up by one point, and statistically that uh, appears to just be a dead heat when you're looking at it. I see that in some of the other uh, key states. Again, if there was to be a election held today, it appears that Obama would take it. Now let me ask this question. Romney came off as uh, feisty, uh, almost agitated at times in the last uh, debate. And uh, people, you know, you, you invigorated the base. They like that. But also in terms of fact-checking, there's something like 27 either positions that uh, Romney's taken in the past that were inconsistent or in some cases the media is saying uh, he just outright uh, misrepresented certain facts. I guess I want to give him the benefit of doubt by not calling him a liar today on the air, but certainly the facts of what he was saying are questionable. 
Let's talk about those issues first, and let's go to Obama then. Sure. I'll even give more of the benefit of the doubt than you. I don't think they're lying about these issues. I really think they believe their own hype. <laughs> I think they see it the world that way, and their own math, whether or not it adds up or not, in their mind it does. <laughs> and it's, that is problematic. Right. It's they're, they're, He's not going to uh, reduce taxes on the rich. He's right. not going to raise taxes on the middle class, but I'm already looking at the, you know, the mortgage deduction, and I'm looking at other credits and deductions that I take, and there isn't any way you can take anything away off of my tax sheet without it causing an increase in my taxes. Period. Right. Uh, and he's not going to reduce taxes of the rich, but he's proposing to, for example, eliminate or reduce drastically the uh, estate tax, which is a huge tax benefit to the rich. Uh, he's going to put more money in the military. Uh, he's going to he's going to uh, get rid of Big Bird. Uh, big Bird is a funny thing, but there's this great big reaction across Facebook where you've got all kinds of people. Uh, yeah, it, does Big Bird become an issue, and and does that galvanize what the issue is? I, I think Big Bird is a metaphor, and um, I actually think it's one of the reasons why the debate did not go this badly as people are thinking for Obama, is that Romney got out there on some key issues, and that's a very specific one that people can identify with and start to think through. Uh, even in a conservative state like where I live, Idaho, the legislature tried a few years ago, in 2010, to eliminate public broadcasting in the state. And it was rural people who stood up and said, no, PBS is our one source outside of uh, commercial television. We don't have satellite, we can't afford it, uh, we like it. And the legislature backed down. So I think, I think he might have overestimated that one. The other thing is for native communities, if you eliminate PBS, you eliminate a really wealth of information from tribal radio stations, the National Native American Public Telecommunications and their programming, and uh, in village pro radio throughout Alaska. Uh, heavily relied upon in Alaska. Uh, what happened to Obama? Someone said calm, cool, collective. Someone said almost to the point of where he wanted to let Romney hang himself to give him a uh, for what's going on. Uh, uh, Romney obviously ran to the center uh, uh, of this. When you look at him, you wouldn't recognize the Romney on the debate compared to the Romney on the trail earlier wooing the conservative right vote. Uh, what was Obama thinking? Do you think it was just a matter of him saying, I'm, I'm not going to react the way they're going to try to get me to by being feisty, calm, cool, collective, presidential? Did it backfire on him? I think this is just Obama. There was a debate with Hillary Clinton, and he was terrible. Uh, same kind of thing. He didn't look like he wanted to be there. His, uh, he was professorial. He just wasn't engaged in the body in an act of politics. And I think that's just who he is. And I think that's, I mean, every candidate has pluses and minuses, and I think that's his minus. Is he going to come out of the gate uh, fired up, or are we going to see Biden and Ryan? Is that where the, the, the battle is going to be? The gladiators go at each other at that level? I think the, the gladiators will go at each other, and Biden tends to be a lot better at debates than Obama. But I think what they're really focused on is that's what the headlines are. That's what people are paying attention to. But what re really matters is are they getting their vote out? And I think that's what they're going to focus over the next 30 days is to make sure that their voters turn out. One of the ways they do that's really interesting is early voting. And uh, four years ago, they were very um, good at it. They got people identified, got them out to the polls, and half the country voted before Election Day. And uh, I think that trend will continue. My understanding is that trend may be a little bit higher this year again, up into maybe perhaps 60% of people casting early votes. And that augurs well for Obama. And the ground, uh, the ground battle, you don't see Romney as having that kind of ground battle or with this latest surge of uh, uh, his supporters, they're fevered up and ready to knock on doors. Can they match the ground war? They have their own ground game, and it's also very good. It tends to work through to churches. Uh, this Sunday, a lot of uh, evangelical preachers 
decided to uh, defy the ban on uh, politics that the um, First Amendment the idea of separation of church and state and from the pulpit basically uh, said get out and vote for Romney. So um, they have their own get out of the vote. It's just different. They're not jeopardizing their uh, tax uh, exempt tax free status as a church by engaging in politics. They better be a little bit careful about that. It was an act of civil disobedience, and they all did it together. Their idea is that the IRS won't be able to do them all at once, but uh, it raises an interesting philosophical question. Well, with all the corporate money and all the ch uh, churches joining in on it, uh, maybe this whole thing is going to get rearranged by the time uh, uh, we bow out of being involved in politics. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. What you, anything else you're looking forward to in the next uh, week? Are you looking for the next foreign policy th uh, debate with uh, Romney? Do you think something's going to change there? Um, it could. I mean, the, Romney's very pro-military, and the idea of building up the military and p possibly uh, engaging in another war is something that ought to be part of the main discussion because uh, we've just been through the longest war in U.S. history. And do we really want to go there again is a, is a really good question to ask. Uh, one other thing from the last debate that I think Indian country ought to pay attention to is Romney wants to devolve as much federal authority back to the states as possible. And he specifically talked about Medicaid. And for the Indian health system, that would be an extraordinary development um, and probably would not improve the system. It seems to me that it would be very difficult to, to work with it considering the dynamics of it, and it would at least take an awful lot of time to get there. Ryan's voting record doesn't help the Romney campaign. If uh, examining uh, Paul Ryan's vote uh, uh, record, uh, voted against the Cobell settlement, voted against water rights settlement, voted against Indian Health Service, voted against, you know, as far as I know, he's voted against everything that allocated money to uh, Native American tribes. And I think that uh, tribal voters are looking at that. And uh, you, you talked a little bit about earlier at some point about the get out the Native vote in your column. I was reading the column, the National Congress of American Indians, saying this is the number one priority is turn out the vote, whether it's Republican or Democrat, but to turn it out to, to get Native people to participate in the process. Tipping states, Wisconsin, maybe 2%, 1%? Wisconsin, I think it's around 2%. Um, Nevada, Nevada would be very interesting. Montana is like 7%. Um, Arizona, it'd be a good one, uh, particularly for the Senate race more than the presidential race. Um, New Mexico, uh, New Mexico is pretty much a blue column at this point, but uh, native vote. Colorado, um, that would be primarily urban, but also the two tribes in the southern part of the state, the Ute Mountain and the um, Southern Ute, and Florida. Interesting. All oh, those uh, Mika, conservative Mikasuki Seminoles who put George Bush in over Gore, uh, 400 of them a few years back, and hold the most powerful position in politics, the balance of power there on the... On the uh, one of those seminal reservations. Mark, thanks for joining with Happy. us uh, today. We'll uh, uh, do it again. You're doing a blog. Where can we find that blog here? Uh, the blog I'm doing is that uh, it's, a, it's a complicated address. So just go to my website, marktrahan.com, and there's a link there. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks again. And that is another roundup of news from Indian Country. On this edition of the Native News Update, we want to thank you for being with us and come back again soon.